Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. VSLDB participates in a milestone credit initiative to transform the energy sector. The Goodwill Ambassador Program yields more benefits with a donation of PPEs. And JICA St. Lucia supports relief efforts in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The St. Lucia Development Bank, SLDB, has partnered with the CARICOM Development Fund in providing funding for projects in the energy sector. The CARICOM Development Fund, CDF, last November launched a credit risk abatement facility, the CRAF. The goal of the CRAF is to incentivize more lending to small and medium-sized enterprises, SMEs, to fund renewable energy and energy efficiency projects. Chairman of the SLDB, Nicholas Bernard, says the craft is important to the small business sector as they are hampered in sourcing financing. Mr. Bernard made the comments during the signing of the agreement between the SLDB and the CDF. The SLDB has engaged with various associations and private sector bodies in its vein of sustainable energy production and usage. Predominant among the issues expressed by members has been their perceived lack of creditworthiness and through either their business size or the collateral available for security, there's been obviously a clear need for a facility of this nature to provide both lenders and borrowers an added level of security confidence. We believe that with the right financing model, we can incentivize private sector members who are keen to move forward towards renewable energy and energy efficiency solutions for their businesses. This craft intervention is another pillar to support our national move towards a low carbon economy and the creation of a sustainable economy characterized by an env environmentally friendly, productive, efficient, and innovative private sector. The availability of this facility will allow business leaders to be creative in developing sustainable projects and technologies that we hope will revolutionize the business sector. The Chief Executive Officer of the CDF, Rodinal Suma, says the credit risk abatement facility will aid in the transition to a low-carbon economy in the region. Suma stressed that a reduction in harmful greenhouse gas emissions will generate cost savings which will increase productivity and business competitiveness. One division of the CDF provides direct support, dedicated financing to the energy sector in the form of concessional loans and grants while another section, which is what we're building out now, has been engaged in developing a more market-based approach and market-based mechanisms that would support increased investment, but working through established financial institutions. The primary focus is to incentivize additional lending from local financial institutions to the business sector for renewable energy and energy efficiency interventions in the member states that we serve, and incremental lending, focusing on lending that would not otherwise occur in the normal course of business. So we are stimulating increased market activity. And CRAF seeks to aid in the transition to a low carbon economy in uh, CDF CARICOM member states through facilitating a reduction in harmful greenhouse gas emissions, which hasten climate change and increase the frequency and severity of weather hazards which we are all too familiar with in the Caribbean and that impact our lives severely. St. Lucia is one of five countries in which the credit facility is being piloted. The others are Barbados, Guyana, Belize and Suriname. The CDF estimates that more than 100 projects will be supported by the craft to the tune of 25 million US dollars. However, Mr. Suma laments the reluctance of commercial banks to participate in the initiative. The SLDB is the first financial institution to sign onto the program. So far, we have identified three projects in St. Lucia that will benefit from the facility um, at, a, at a combined uh, total of approximately one million US dollars. And some of these projects have already received technical assistance under the CRAF. And we expect at least one of them to, to one business to be applying for financing was close to um, 500,000 US dollars or 1.3 million EC dollars. The SLDB on the institutional building side has participated in two capacity building exercises conducted by the CDF recently. Uh, over four days, your management and your frontline staff have participated in training that have provided them with a detailed orientation on the craft. And we've taken a deep dive into energy project financing, understanding key project risk and borrower credit risk. 
And the reason that we're doing this is that we're introducing models that would help uh, to, in the choice of appropriate technologies on the business side, and also a renewable energy financing tool um, which would assist in, in improving the credit decision. So we are building capacity both with the SMEs and with the financial institutions. Small businesses that operate in the sectors of tourism, agriculture and or manufacturing are eligible for financing. They can access loans from the SLDB for projects from $25,000 to no more than $750,000. In other sustainable development matters, on World Earth Day 2021, Thursday 22nd April, Latin America and the Caribbean welcomed the treaty into force of the new regional agreement on access to information, public participation, and access to justice in environmental matters, otherwise known as the Escazú Agreement. St. Lucia was one of the first countries to sign in 2018 and later ratify the treaty in 2020. Government now reaffirms the importance of this first regional environmental treaty and its commitment to protecting the planet and the people who defend it. The legal officer in the Department of Sustainable Development explains the next step in St. Lucia meeting the obligations of the agreement. More importantly, we need to look at our legal frameworks, our legal and procedural frameworks. Mm -hmm. So we know that the World Resources Institute, yes. they are on the ground. They, they had selected three countries, St. Lucia, Jamaica, and there's a third country. To look at the laws, and I know a consultancy, I'm not sure if it is finished yet, but we are hoping that we will get the recommendations soon mm -hmm. for us to know what we need to do in terms of our legal framework. The Escazú Agreement requires each participating state to guarantee the rights of every person to live in a healthy environment. It also seeks to deepen environmental governance by strengthening community engagement. St. Lucia as a tourism destination continues to dominate the global scene despite the impact of COVID-19. The island is up for major accolades in the 28th Annual World Travel Awards. More from Jesse Leos. St. Lucia has been nominated for six prestigious titles in the 28th Annual World Travel Awards, including Caribbean's Leading Adventure Tourism Destination 2021, Caribbean's Leading Cruise Destination 2021, Caribbean's Leading Destination 2021, Caribbean's Leading Luxury Island Destination 2021, Caribbean's Leading Nature Destination 2021, and Caribbean's Leading Honeymoon Destination 2021. Jerrain Georges is the St. Lucia Tourism Authority's Public Relations Manager. Now, the World Travel Awards is a global initiative to really recognize and reward excellence in the travel and tourism industry. And travel and tourism professionals and consumers globally are invited to vote for the brands that they consider to be the best worldwide. And so the nominee gaining the most votes will be awarded um, the winner. So with the 2021 nominations, of course, St. Lucia is eager to add more titles to her prestigious list of accolades. And um, as we know, in 2009, the destination captured the title of Caribbean's leading travel personality. And from 2009, has continuously won the title of Caribbean as well as world's leading honeymoon destination, with the most recent honor being in 2020. Minister for Tourism, Honorable Dominic Fede, indicated, quote, all efforts made toward the advancement of the destination are to be recognized as a collective. And so we thank our service providers and the people of St. Lucia for continuing to place the destination among meccas of the tourism travel industry. We are optimistic that new titles would be attributed to St. Lucia and look forward to what lies ahead. The public relations manager noted that service providers were also nominated. Service providers across St. Lucia have also been nominated for several prestigious um, Caribbean titles, and that includes Caribbean Leading Boutique Resort, Caribbean Leading Destination Management Company, and Caribbean's Leading Honeymoon Resort. And several are also vying for titles of the island's best, and that is St. Lucia's Leading Car Rental Company, St. Lucia's Leading Beach Resort, St. Lucia's Leading Hotel, St. Lucia's Leading Resort, St. Lucia's leading destination management company, St. Lucia's leading tour operator, and St. Lucia's leading travel agency. Now you must register to vote, and voting is now open through August 2nd, 2021 on the World Travel Awards website. 
Um, voting is easy. They are listed by country as well as by the various categories. And so um, this is um, very easy. Voting is open through to August 2nd, 2021. The World Travel Awards Grand Final Ceremony will take place on October 12th, 2021 in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. For the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons. St. Lucia has joined the Americas in celebrating the 19th vaccination week during the week of the 24th to the 30th of April 2021. This week's observance is being held under the theme, Vaccines Bring Us Closer, Get Vax, bringing into focus how vaccines can bring people closer by keeping them healthy and ensuring that diseases remain at bay. This is especially important as the hemisphere combats COVID-19. Tekla Jabatis is the Assistant Principal Nursing Officer and National Immunization Manager. The COVID-19 pandemic has challenged the Caribbean region and the rest of the world, affecting us from all dimensions and causing us to interact in unimaginable ways. As the Department of Health and Wellness reflects, it is noted that we have come a long way from where we were at this time last year. Although we are still in the pandemic, significant steps have been made towards achieving the normalcy which was stripped away from us as a result of COVID-19. Several clinical trials were on the way towards a vaccine or vaccines that could protect us from COVID-19 and its complications. St. Lucia has administered over 24,000 first doses and over 1,000 second doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine to date. As the ministry continues to roll out the campaign, everyone is encouraged to get vaccinated. The gains achieved with the elimination of measles, rubella, polio and tetanus through vaccinations leaves no doubt that the same can be achieved with the COVID-19 vaccines. However, Jabatis notes that a greater amount of the population needs to be vaccinated to achieve this. Therefore, we plead to you, the citizenry, to get vaccinated against COVID-19. By doing so, you reduce the burden of severe disease, virus transmission, hospitalizations, and death. At this moment, I take this opportunity to recognize the hard work and dedication of our health team, our physicians, nurses, health aides, attendants, and other healthcare partners who continue to sustain the national immunization program, especially during the pandemic. The gains of the national immunization program would not be possible without your efforts. You continue to advocate for vaccines and delivering quality service to the people of St. Lucia. It has not been easy having to re-strategize considering the COVID-19 protocols which have been put in place. Additionally, your commitment and dedication took St. Lucia through a successful introduction and rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine. While the focus is on COVID-19 and COVID-19 vaccines in the battle against this pandemic and aiming for population immunity, the ministry reminds the public about the importance of the regular vaccination program. Meantime, the Department of Creative Industries presented 47,000 face shields to the Department of Education and the Ministry of Equity on Thursday, 29th April. The Personal Protective Equipment forms part of a donation made by the charity group in Canada until we meet again, ACN, a caring network. Through Goodwill Ambassador, His Excellency Peter Kenny Chitoli. Chief Education Officer Dr. Fiona Philip Meyer accepted a share of 29,000 face shields to be distributed to all schools on the island. We are privileged to receive the largest number, but note that it will support and go to every single child on island. We looked at our early childhood sector, at our special education centers, at our Upton Girls, our boys training center, our primary and secondary schools. And through those calculations, we're very, very happy to have been told that we'll receive one per child. And that's what's significant for us. 
Deputy Director in the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, Eurelis Delay, accepted the 13,000 face shields to go towards constituency councils for the vulnerable in the communities. This donation will go a long way in assisting our ministry in providing equipment, safety equipment, to the vulnerable persons in our society. Only last week, we donated or distributed 4,500 hygiene packages to persons on social assistance and other persons who are, dis who are disadvantaged by the COVID-19 virus. And face shields were not included in the hygiene packages. And so this very, we are elated for this generous donation that will complement the items that were in the hygiene packages. Dele also accepted 5,000 on behalf of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports for youth in the various communities. Minister responsible for culture and creative industries, Senator Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose, expressed thanks to the Goodwill Ambassadors, including His Excellency Chito Lee, for the continued efforts to uplift St. Lucia, particularly during the pandemic. We want to say, of course, on behalf of the government of St. Lucia, we want to say thank you to um, HE High Commissioner, um, not Ambassador, Ambassador. Um, Ken Chitoli, um, for this donation of 47,000 face shields. Um, as you know, the COVID virus is still very prevalent um, in St. Lucia. And of course, we've been working feverishly to ensure that our citizens understand um, and appreciate the value you know, of ensuring that they are protected um, against the virus. And I'm sure our students, our young people, um, our communities would all be happy um, to receive that wonderful gift um, from Ambassador Shitoli. Senator Honorable Fortuna Belrose there. The Sister Isle of St. Vincent and the Grenadines continues to require and receive assistance amid the eruptions of the La Sufria volcano. Herma Dimak reports on the latest relief initiative by the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA. The government of Japan, through the Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA, is joining the list of organizations aiding relief efforts in St. Vincent and the Grenadines as the country continues to manage effects of eruptions of the La Sofia volcano. Chief Representative of the St. Lucia Office, JICA, presented a supply of blankets and water tanks to the Sister Isle. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, is facilitating the shipment of the donation. Uh, and uh, we would like to express a special thanks uh, for uh, to NEMO uh, in the government of uh, to the Central Russia uh, to, uh, to, the, uh, kind, to provide us with a uh, kind support to deliver the uh, goods uh, to uh, Central uh, Vincent and the Grenadines. I really appreciate the uh, your support uh, of uh, the, uh, NEMO. The acting deputy director of NEMO, Lindy Eristi, says the Japan International Cooperation Agency provides continuous assistance to the National Emergency Management Organization. Not only at this time in the provision of supplies, but also in providing training to our fellow solutions, as well as the volunteers, and also in, 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 in terms of provision of the various skills and, and, and technical training for persons in St. Lucia. We are very appreciative of their efforts and their continued collaboration in fine-tuning our national emergency organization and also making St. Lucia more empowered in terms of building resistance, resilience, as well as ensuring that we are able to manage our country in the event of any disaster, in, in a state of preparedness at this time. The National Emergency Management Organization thanked JICA for their continued support. From the Government Information Service, Hermady Mark reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquiol.
mommy took me to the dentist. Really? How was that? It wasn't bad. The dentist was really nice and she told me that mouth rinsing is very important for healthy teeth. How so? Rinsing with water gets rid of food in between your teeth which can protect you from getting cavities. No way! So after I eat or drink, I think it's a good idea to rinse out my mouth with water. Yes! Make sure to spit out the water after rinsing because swallowing will only bring the germs into your body. Remember, water is an easy and cost-effective way to instantly boost your health and a healthy body to fight many diseases including COVID-19. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle, a Creole. Monsieur Tan Chanel, Monsieur Madame Department, Kini Responsabilité, pour information à gouvernement celle-ci, c'est GIS et Télévision National PIA NTN, qui a présenté une nouvelle à Creole. Présenté Primus Hutchinson. Jean Choisez qui a resté à l'autre commune à cette ici, j'ai préparé pour retourner à ces différents paroisses qui a choisi. C'est le représentatif pour choisir Exaltibus, Honorable Bradley Felix, qui fait déclaration cela de la présentation à ce budget pour l'année 2021 pour 2022. Selon le représentatif choisi, là, plusieurs citoyens choisis, en particulier ceux qui sont restés à la façade nord, c'est-à-dire que c'est les Gozili et les Pawes qui ont eu un plan pour retourner choisir comme la grande occasion à présent pour que ces Pawes-là ne soient pas sur le terrain que ça eux-mêmes. Un projet pour développer le placement et le terrain pour ces gens Pawes-là, ça c'est pour acheter et bâtir le caillou, ça a commencé. Côté plus de 300 applications, j'ai fait. Là aussi, il y a 16 terrains en commun au PIA pour même qualité projet Kaisala. Ministre de la responsabilité pour le commerce, investissement, industrie et les consommateurs, qui aussi c'est représentatif pour choisir Exaltibus, c'est Honorable Bradley Félix, annonce que ce qui est plus important en bas projet Kaisala, et que ces provisions j'ai faites pour ces GDS, ces paroisses choisies là, tout veut dire que les acteurs, chaque travail. Selon le représentatif Félix, c'est un terrain qui a été un prix qui est très raisonnable, particulièrement. C'est ça, côté moun déjà qui resté à ce jour avant, en ce lot qui commune à Guapawesala. On a Félix parler aussi concernant le travail à sur l'école secondaire choisie, côté Jabati et bien ajouté un grand champ nouveau qui côté 7,8 millions de dollars. Il y a aussi mentionné le travail que j'ai fait pour vivre ou en jeu Bronze Ball là à la fac. En parmi l'autre projet que j'ai fait, c'est certains moun à Oblo qui partenaient au courant, ils ont trouvé solar panel pour faciliter le service courant. Pour ça, du service Wi-Fi à parmi l'autre. Travaillant sur Chimé Saltibus et Daban, j'ai fait, mais j'ai fini. Il y a un tanglo qui a caché 100 gallons de l'eau pour replacer vieux tanglo qui était à Mont Jack. Aussi, il y a un community center pour commune au Piaï qui a été construit pour un pile temps. Et après, un pile 8 ans, la Banque mondiale a approuvé la construction de la Ponef pour la commune Salah. En parmi l'autre projet, le représentant Bradley Félix parlait de. C'est travail chimé, à Paris Côte de mon tête, la Maz, à parmi l'autre Paris, choisi. Ministre de la responsabilité pour le sport et le développement jeunesse, on est Edmond Estefan, en représentation pour le budget 2021 pour Vendée, continue pour placer l'importance à ce jeunesse en développement national en cette ici et commitement gouvernement pour faire ça en réalité. Côté plan, c'est pour utiliser la majorité en population de jeunesse. On a Stéphane fait un annoncement à la présentation pour le budget l'année ici et l'année prochaine. On a Stéphane remarqué que l'année 20 jeunesse officiers qui a adressé la nécessité de jeunesse au Liban, c'est ici. Le ministre qui dit des affaires pour le développement de la jeunesse a dit que ces jeunes officiers sont là pour pour procurer un bon jean et un support pour un peu de jeunesse qui mérite des grèves pour ça. Tout le monde s'est ici. Mais cela parle aussi concernant l'organisation de services de jeunesse et des de contributions qui ont déjà fait pour le développement de la jeunesse en toutes ces communes à cette ici. On a Stéphane ajouté que le programme est aussi pour tuer l'occasion pour la jeunesse pour 
develop a character a capability yo minister stefan declare yo si lanishness ki ka offer service yo volatema and invest later at your establishment and business court government ka pay young pa ek sa sala yo ek plus business la ka pay lot pa minister la avwe ki bien souvent ma ou ka trouver se plus business la ka chen yo sa sesness la en travail Minister Estefan ka encourage les organisations jeunesse à cette ci pour continuer en bonne direction yo ka ale et toujours faire ce qui les membres exécutifs rendent compte pour responsabilité yo Premier ministre cette ci on a Alain Chassney déclaré que gouvernement cette ci n'y a commitment pour industrie fig pays malgré industrie fig la jeunesse bien sûr l'autre casement à ces plusieurs années qui passaient Premier ministre Chasné fait un annoncement à la Diwan présentation en budget pour l'année ici et l'année prochaine. Premier ministre Chasné fait comprendre ses raisons pour établir un projet pour improuver à ce degré la production FIG à cette ci Ça y est, le Banana Productivity Improvement Project. Projet ça, selon le Premier ministre, c'est pour aider et adresser la situation de production qui est en descendant pour d'autres temps à présent. Premier ministre Chasné promet que ce qui est plus important à l'initiative, c'est pour vivre la nécessité industrie figla pour bailler cette liste l'occasion pour participer dans une industrie qui est en haut 31 billions de dollars. Projet pour improuver la production figla en cette liste, qui a adressé la nécessité pour agrandir des gros acteurs qui en bas la cultivation figla, pour contrôler les maladies et les tibets qui ont affecté la production figla pour aider les cultivateurs à grandir à subitation figure et pour établir une façon pour toutes les finances qui sont soutenables pour y toujours ni avalables toutes ces nécessités fig. Depuis le projet ça a commencé, le Premier ministre Chas nous dit que des gros acteurs qui ont bas cultivation augmenté par 39.3% et que l'immobilisation fig aussi sorti 286 pour 765. Ça a occasionné des gros tons par acteur pour hausser 16 pour 23% par acte. Le Premier ministre a dit qu'il a mis en place plus de 6 millions de dollars pour pousser le projet pour le développement de l'industrie FIG. C'est ici, plus de 20. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons votre nouvelle. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour votre invitation. Je vous remercie encore. Si vous avez la vie, je vous remercie pour votre nouvelle. À quoi est-ce que vous avez Je vous remercie pour votre nouvelle. Merci à Pearl Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 p.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.